So, okay, you know, Bahrain, later on, before we end this, think of some I think Bahrain, Bahrain names that we will have to a bus. You must be able to say no. Before we end this, we're going to give some Bahrain names. So, how about this, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Second day in Bahrain and crossing the world where it is to be here. How does it feel that your work is still recognized all over the world, but let alone the pain? It's not with you, sir. I, honestly, I'm always surprised. I'm surprised that anyone recognizes me at the moment. I, 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 it doesn't go in my head. I live in a very, like, like tiny little area, and I, so every time I step out, I'm like, oh, I got another work. I'm like, from what work? I'm always surprised. I, I forgot. I, I always forget I do that part. I was, it's crazy though. This is so far away from home. And the fact that you guys, you know, recognize us from our work, that feels amazing. It really does. It's such an incredible feeling. Well, sir, you're amazing. That's right, right? Let's go ahead and Keep going. Keep going. What else do you like about it? The beer! Thank you, see? It's a big day. It's a big day. I'm a girl for every time. Mr. Monroe, how does it feel? Like, more than more than three years. The biggest surprise to me is that I have two kids and they don't even know who I am. So for me to come all the way to Bahrain and have all of you people know me, and I walk downstairs and my kids look at me and go, what? No. <laughs> What do you do for a living, Dad? And honestly, no one in my family watches anything I do, so I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. They either watch, they don't watch, or if they do watch, they ask me for refunds. <laughs> Which really sucks, because you got to carry like $9 and change all the time. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to bring it up for you, that's for sure. That's for sure. Alex! How do you feel about it? I mean, it's the greatest thing in the world. I mean, I, the one thing I've always had about storytelling is it's a very good thing to do. You know, we never thought that Vikings would, would be successful in one country, let alone so many. And every time I travel to the Middle East, actually especially the Middle East, uh, I'm reminded about how lucky I am to be a very small part, small part of the story of the world. Uh, and we all have jobs because of you guys. So thank you, truly. It's, 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 I'm going to watch the world, too. Well, thank you. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, Mr. Cooper, now, a question for you. If you would stand right now here at the center stage and you say Shazam, what kind of power are you going to get? What's going to happen? I hope it would be flight. Yeah. Uh, and here's the thing, whenever I think of flight, I think about how painful it must feel. That part of your body is floating and the other part of your body is being held down by an invisible harness. Okay. So I just want to be, like, I want to be super immovable. Alright. So, like, if I stood up and said Shazam, I would be cemented there. <laughs> and I, this is for long today, it was a strength that I had made great in some acting style. I pulled the hamstring one season, oh, man. and so from running three feet, and, <laughs> and uh, they call it orbital, which is which is where everyone has to act around me. So I'll be one one spot, and then everyone has to do the same. Okay. Me. It's called orbital acting, and I, I it started because of me. So yeah. Cooper, Cooper, you stay there. Everyone will be after on Cooper or we'll Oh, hey, yes, yes. I mean, I mean, he's going for that. Let's go, let's go. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it does happen. A lot of super skills happen here. One more time, let's make it for Mr. Cooper. We appreciate your skills. Thank you. I can do them all from the city. Let's go. Watch this. I go, well, you can never just hang on doors. You know, I want to talk about it. Oh, well, at least give us a in your own way. I'll say, cousin! Just in case. Just in case. Whenever lightning, you know I'm lightning here. Yeah, yeah, especially as a thing. 
gets messy. Yeah, yeah, it's messy. This white couch will get sick. Oh. You don't want it. Yeah, no, 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 thank you, thank you for visiting. You are very welcome. Mr. Monroe, we all grew up listening to you, watching your work, having you here in is such a great honor, first of all. We really appreciate that. Yeah, for real. Well, thank you. Uh, I mean, like I was just saying, uh, you know, that's the, the, uh, the reward of doing the work we do is to see the people come up and talk about certain scenes and movies that you created or certain characters that you created. And if they're entertaining, I mean, it's amazing for us. We, we do our work mostly for cool people on set. Right. And so we get to see, uh, see the foundations of our shows that we do. And mm -hmm. they appreciate it. That's, uh, that's uh, one of the gratitude that's done. Now, I don't know if I like the fact that you keep saying that you every day like is growing up watching my show. I'm sorry, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. It's just a, I, I have a big body of work because I started as a fetus. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. <laughs> I'm not that old. But it seems like pretty much you've been part of our audience. I don't know how I'm going to say <laughs> but how did it feel with that ship called Scary Movies to Riverdale? Like, you know, we treat it with high energy than coming with an intense show, like, you know, like the drama we did in Riverdale. How was that transition for you? Well, you know, I think my own personal, personal sensibilities is that I'm a little bit more, I enjoy comedy, I'm just, I, I'm not, like I said, like that's, that's what I am as a person, I love a lot of uh, I love sense of humor. So to go from something like scary and go to white chicks and do something a little more. You know, to go to something a little more dramatic and play like the, the Black Hood and Riverdale. And so, yeah, but, but that's what's interesting for us as performers to be able to. To be able to be comedy, to be able to do the drama, to be able to do action. I mean, that's just part of the journey that we're on and what we all want to do. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, you have anything that you want to share with us in future projects which we'll look forward to? We talk about a certain movie that I had come out today in a certain country with certain people, but I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that. Well, I guess we're sitting here in the if you're cool with us, okay, don't share this with anyone from SANG, okay? <laughs> Keep this between yourselves. But yes, I have a movie that called Almost and I Totally Killer. Did you see it? You saw it? Did you like it? You did? Okay, so Totally Killer is on Prime. It's a Blumhouse movie, it's a comedic slasher film with a little bit of Back to the Future sensibility. And I really love doing that movie, Karen and Shit, the star in it. Yeah. Did you like it? Was it fun? I haven't seen it yet, so. Oh! Uh, if you want your money back. Okay. <laughs> I have $9 right here. Take it. You're going to take it. Okay, that's fun. That's fun. Thank you. All right. Alex. Now, you've done a lot. You know, Bad Boys, Hunger Games. Vikings. So now, after the Vikings and all that, where do you feel? So bad boys, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got you got Hunger Games as well, and the Vikings and different stuff taking place. They're all physically challenging. You have to do a lot. So what do you do? How do you keep it up? So much of what I love about acting is because you get to look many lives. Um, so to me, it's just about what the role demands of you. Uh, for Vikings, it's not like we necessarily had to go to the gym every day. It was just naturally we thought these guys are out farming a lot. They're warriors. They're picking up heavy stuff. They're building things. So naturally, they're going to be bigger and more muscular people. Um, you know, and then if I play a, an officer in a war film uh, in like the 70s, they'll run them all over the sling so that I would stand down for that. But if I have to do bad boys, I'm playing an 
curve. And we thought it would be really funny if this kind of curve was like really built. <laughs> yeah, you don't see that a lot. So really just whenever the world calls for, um, I answer that call. Uh, in, in whatever way I can. Uh, I did a wrestling show called Heels and I had to get into a specific type of shape so that we could withstand the pressure that we would have to take from doing all these stunts in the ring. Um, so uh, that's kind of the beauty of it, is, is, is trying to be a comedian in that sense. Wow, wow, that's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll say so. Yeah, so this is funny. First off, Boston was a big, uh, big inspiration. Uh, like when I was a young man, I was a young man, and uh, and uh, <laughs> a very young man, and you know, just watching, uh, but watching that energy uh, that he gave was a massive inspiration. It's like, oh, he just goes off. I feel like they, like they just let him do his thing. It's like, oh, I always thought it was brilliant. Well, he was in Witch Mountain. I was, you know, like, I was a you know, big guy. I'm like, I can get in shape, and then years later, you get like so built and small. I'm like, like, what have I been doing? Wait a minute. I was like, I'm gonna like, go back to the gym, and then, and then, and then he just grew up and got massive. I'm like, so it's, I mean, like, it's just so impressive. Like, both these gentlemen right here are so impressive. But I thought it was like, I was just laughing. What am I doing? So it's, so it's really, it's, it's, it's so cool. It's, and this is also the Honest, honest uh, couch for me to be on because it's, it's we, you know, it's like I know them, but it's like uh, we haven't done anything. But that's like the beauty of our business, and that's why I was calling them. So great, all these things are amazing to see you and just answer your questions and meet everyone. It's incredible. But like we get to interact as well and share for our love of cinema. And wow. and the, the business gets way smaller as we continue in. So even though we might not know each other before this event, we definitely. Know people right. that, that we'll be sharing talk, you know, and we know each other's work. Uh, so we're all mutual fans, and we're all like serving the greater good of the business, which to me has always been about just telling the best things we possibly can. We all want each other to win. No one here thinks he's hotter than I do. There you go. <laughs> I think Alexander is the hottest man on the planet. <laughs> do you not agree? Yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> Are you agree? We got one here. No, but it's, it's like Alexander said, it's fun for us because even if I don't know Sam personally, and I don't get the car, I go to the work, I get a fan, and then when they become really cool people that you hope that they are, it's just another experience for us, you know, to, to be with you guys and then meet people that you, you know, and Alex and I have known each other a long time. We're both going to have to do that. Okay. And, uh, yes. Oh, yeah, there you go. Here we go. We have some Canucks in the house. All right. And that we have never met to this. So, really cool. We did a little really chat and conversation over the weekend. So, another great experience for us as well. So, amazing. Amazing. I love this. Okay, one more time. Here at Born and Born on stage. We're here. I must say, for me, 
the most kind of odd place that I've ever filmed is I shot a, a film in uh, Romania, which was very interesting. Um, you know, I've shot all over North America. I've shot, I also did Hawaii, by boat in Hawaii. Um, the most interesting experience has been so far, honestly, haven't actually been traveling and shooting. It's actually been traveling and meeting people at, at different countries in different colonies, you know. So, uh, but yes, the, as far as shooting a film, probably Romania was about somewhere really interesting for me. I, I mean, it's that's kind of the beauty of this um, this job is, is not only do you get to live on the life, but you get to experience different cultures, um, not just for a day, but for months at a time. You know, I lived in Ireland for six years when we shot Vikings. I lived next to Anderson Air Force Base in Guam. We shot in Morocco. And we shot north of the We took snowmobiles to set uh, for the night. We uh, shot in Romania as well. I've seen Bucharest. Uh, and it was an unbelievable experience. And the one thing I think that I take from all of that is that um, we're really not that different, even though our cultures are. We all have the same issues, the same problems. Like people like you can watch a show like Vikings um, and relate to it. Because at the end of the day, my character just wants to improve over his father. And I know that there's people in the room who feel the same way. You know, I just think that that's, that's what it's all about. It's just it's finding a way to bring it to the next moment. And I do feel like that. Thanks, Thank you. You know, it's funny that Tom Sanders said that as well, because you mentioned the movie White Chips. So you think about that movie, and you think about comedic sensibility of that movie. That is probably, out of all the films that I've done, everywhere I go in the world, that movie is popular with every different culture. Yeah. And it just goes to show you that human beings, we have, whether it be music, you know, people say music brings people together. I think movies like that, like comedy and things that make people laugh, as human beings, we all have that same kind of sense of humor. So. It, it's really interesting when you do travel around and meet different cultures and they all go, we have more chips, you know? Yeah, it, it, yeah. that's the other thing. Five times? The year alone? I just want you to know the, the panty snipping scene. Hey, those were right out of a package, okay? I didn't make more than wear them, I'm not a method guy. They were straight out of the package. I just want you to know that. Thank you very much. That's enough. That's enough. Okay, <laughs> sleep right now. Oh, So this question is for Lovely. Where did you get your hat? Can you give it to me? <laughs> Where did I get this hat? Yeah. Well, it was a gift from my son. <laughs> oh, so I apologize that I can't give it to you, but I really love the fact that you like it because I really, I saw it in a store in Vancouver one day and uh, in a board shop that my son goes to all the time because he's a big snowman, uh, which I'm sure Alex is too because he goes to Worcester quite a bit, I know that. But, uh, and I told him, I said, oh man, I love that hat. And the next day I got up in the morning and had it on the camera for him. So, yeah, it's a Brixton, uh, Brixton surf company. So, I appreciate that, bro. And I would love to give it to you in a different circumstance if I would love Okay, yeah. cheers. You know, we could, we could try it on you later and take a photo of us. We do that together, bro. That's pretty cool. Thanks. All right, question. Like, I was terrified, you know, when, uh, but I'm like, 
I'm gonna if I miss this opportunity, you know, that's with anything. If I don't, if you don't put yourself out there, then so I had that in my head since I was five. Because at five years old, I was like, one day I'm gonna have lockers. One day I'm gonna be like having to live on my own. One day I'm gonna be married. One day I'm gonna be kids, and then one day I'm gone. And do I want to spend my whole life going, oh, I pooped on that boat? And so no, what, no, he's good. Yeah, I'm so thankful for my younger son. If you can only meet me when I start stopping to it's not because of anything. It's because of it. we, we just ate the log last night, that's why. I like how you just the one. Well, I'm here, man. I'm so low and I'm prepared. <laughs> well, tomorrow, the question goes to you as well. Well, what would I say to my younger self? Um, I don't know. You know, it's such a hard question because there's so many answers to that. Um, I, 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 I guess I, I got to say what uh, kind of along the lines of what Cooper said is that I, that I feel like I've made, I've kind of grown up, made the choices from my younger self to where I am now, and I don't really, I really don't have any regrets as far as, as far as. The choices I've made, I mean, I have a wonderful family, I've been with a same woman for 34 years, I think, and, uh, yeah. and uh, so, so I guess, the, I guess, I guess maybe career advice, I think myself, is to stop trying to navigate so much, you know, just do and enjoy and let it take you where it goes, you know, it's, that's a really tough thing to navigate as far as having a career life. Thinking, oh, I'm only going to do these type of movies. I'm only going to work with these type of people. So, um, but other than that, yeah, I don't. Uh, I agree with you. I don't really have any regrets uh, about some of the choices I made. Um, so from here on, I'll make sure that I keep telling myself that as I get older, you know, to keep to just you know stay true to your heart. So, thank you. Okay, so now it depends on you. The higher, 
your voice is, this is going to be his name. Alright? So, Nelson? Nope, no, 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 no. Johnson! Oh, wow. So long! Do you remember that? Oh, Ahmed! Yeah. 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 